Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to How to Write Your Book 95% Faster as part of the AuthorTube Writing Conference 2022. Uh, I am Denis, and this is... Hi, everyone. I'm Raid. Um, I'm an editor and writing coach with Weekend Publisher. Yeah, and I'm the owner of Weekend Publisher. We'll get a little bit more into uh, about us, but before we uh, get going, I'd like to ask everyone a question. And just let everyone know, this is 100% live. Uh, well, pretty live, actually. There's like a 10-second delay uh, between when we're talking and when you're hearing us. Uh, so, like, that's as close to as live as we can get. Um, but we wanted to be as engaging as possible. We're going to have a Q&A at the end. So, but our first question that we have for you is, what slows down your writing? So if you can put it in the... Um, oh, I already see a comment uh, from Easy Graphics, spotting that beard game. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. You got growing out a little bit. Um, but yeah, if you can write in your comments, what slows down your writing? Because we're going to be going back to these answers later in our chat here. So yeah, we'll get into that. Um, and again, we'll have that Q&A at the very end there. Um, okay, so we have some answers coming in already. What slows down their writing? Awesome, awesome. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll get right into it. Angela writes real life. Yeah, I know. Okay, but we'll, we'll get into that. Um, <clears throat> again, how to write your books 95% faster. Yes, even if you have a busy schedule and if you have a real life. As I'm assuming, unless these are bots here, I'm assuming most people watching this uh, have a real life. So, yeah. <clears throat> so what we're going to be talking about are the most powerful, scientifically proven, and actionable ways to crush your excuses, smash through the writer's block, and start writing your book faster and with more confidence. And before I get into this, I'm going to have to give a, a bit of a disclaimer. Um, this is not about churning out low quality fast books. Uh, it's about producing a high quality story for your readers in the shortest amount of time, pos uh, time possible. So if you're like me, every time you log on to Facebook, there's a new ad about write your book in 60 days, write your book in 30 days, write your book in 14 days, write your book in two hours. Every time I log on, it seems to be a shorter one. And uh, this is not necessarily, this is not what we're talking about. Um, it's about producing the highest quality story for your readers, not just pumping out um, what some people would call just sort of garbage. Um, there is some benefit to doing that and going back and redoing it, but that's that's not what we're, we're talking about in this uh, in this uh, session here. <clears throat> so who are we? Uh, we'll get to just very briefly because it's not about us. It's about everyone. It's about you who's watching this and provide value to you. But it's nice to know who is who is talking to you. Um, but I'll go first and then I'll uh, pass over to Maraid. Uh, my name is Denny. I am originally from Ontario, like Toronto, Ottawa, Kitchener, Waterloo, like that kind of area. Uh, for the past three months, I've been traveling around Europe. Um, I started in Switzerland and France. And as I am talking to you right now, I am sitting in Tallinn, Estonia. Uh, the one fun fact about me is that it was my birthday two days ago. And uh, Maraid, even though she's part of my team, um, forgot to wish me a happy birthday. So I thought now would be a good time to sort of get it out in the open. I so think we're going to air all of our grievances today live for you on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so I'm Reid. Um, as I said, I'm an editor and a writing coach. Um, I'm from London originally, and that's where I'm talking to you from now in Hackney in East London. I've been living in the States for a few years, and I'm recently back. And um, my fun fact is that it was my birthday five days ago, and Denis also didn't mention it. Really? It. Yeah, so that's you first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that didn't go the way I thought I was going to go. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and, and on a more professional note, I'm the owner of uh, Weekend Publisher. Uh, I am primarily a marketing coach, I coach uh, authors how to uh, get more readers for their book. Uh, but I'm also the owner of uh, Weekend Publisher, where we help you uh, write your books, publish them, and market them. Not so much the publish part, because we're not like a hybrid publisher or anything like that. Uh, but if people do have questions, you know, KDP or KDP Select or not, we help them through that. <clears throat> 
um, but it's mostly in the writing and the marketing process. So that's a little bit about us. And we have a bunch of uh, happy birthdays coming in. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate thank it. You, <laughs> it's awesome. All right, so before we get to, uh, into the, the meat of the presentation, I'll give you a little bit of a, uh, of a story. Uh, Craig. Uh, so Craig was re writing his second book, and he was dangerously behind in his story. Specifically, his challenges were, and we'll get into what everyone's challenges there, and I'll read them in the comments. Uh, his challenges were, one, he had a strict deadline with an editor. Um, he had just a busy life, as we all do. Uh, lack of confidence and just a lot of misconceptions about how when he wrote his first book. Because his first book, it took him a long time. It seemed like he was really, really going up the mountain alone, pushing up that ball up the, up the hill, and it seemed to be never-ending. So he had a little bit of misconceptions from that last one, from his first book, being like, okay, this is going to be a long, long year-plus process. Uh, so he had a little bit of that. So for him, panic mode set in, especially with that deadline coming up with his editor. So he just started spiraling. Uh, he kept rewriting uh, sentences, paragraphs, and like even whole chapters. Um, then eventually he just got so tired that he just decided to take action and he got someone in his corner to help him out. And that's when they quickly discovered where his time was being wasted and designed a new plan of action. Uh, so within a short period of time, uh, he was writing an average of three to 5,000 words a week, breaking it up into smaller chunks and then finishing the book in three and a half months. So I'm sure many of you can relate to something like this story. Um, so what we're going to be talking about in our chat here today, today with you is what are the changes that he made? Uh, what led him to go from spiraling out of control uh, to getting his book done much, much faster than his first one? So that's what we're going to talk about. <clears throat> so I'm going to ask, or I'm going to go to the comments, uh, what slows down your writing? So uh, let me just uh, read a couple of them. I keep seeing that beard comment. Uh, life and self-doubt. Yeah, absolutely. Family mm -hmm. time, life, lack of self-discipline. Social time and stress, yeah. Mm. Uh, housework, she's a 1950s housewife. Uh, stopping to do research, yeah, for his action adventure yeah. novel. Yeah, that's very, very common, especially in like historical fiction. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> self-doubt, yeah. <clears throat> what we notice is we broken down to, to, to three points. Lack of accountability and a support system. So everyone has a busy life, right? Craig had a busy life. Um, you know, during that time, his father passed away. Uh, he had vacations. He had work trips and so on. Um, so a busy life is really just just a surface, uh, surface part of the lack of accountability. Um, even just, you know, when I feel like I'm not accountable for something, um, when I'm on a train or on a bus and I have an hour or two to kill, I'll just play a game on my phone as opposed to, you know, reading that book that I should uh, read or writing that uh, article that I should be writing. Uh, so it's not necessarily la lack of time, um, but more so lack of accountability in the support system. So um, secondly, lack of constructive feedback. Um, and that really goes in a lot with low confidence, but we'll get more into that. <clears throat> um, so what's the solution? So we know what the problem is. So you didn't hear come here to me for us just to talk about the problems of authors. Uh, what are the actual solutions? So a study completed by uh, ASTD, an STD, that's like a really awkward, it's really unfortunate they came up with that abbreviation, eh? ASTD. Um, anyways, so it's, it's a legit thing though. It's the American Society for uh, Training and Development, AKA, an STD, mm -hmm. um, said the probability of completing a goal is, and you could read that there, so 10%, only 10% if you actually have an idea or a goal, and then all the way up to 95% if you have a specific accountability appointment with the person you've committed to. So what we're gonna do is walk you through all of that from 10% all the way down to uh, 9%. Uh, 
um ten percent all the way down to ninety five percent. Did I say nine percent? I had ninety five. Okay, okay. All the way from 10 to, to 95%. So when you are finished watching this video, I want you to feel like you are 95, or at least you have the resources or the tools of what to do to get to the point of feeling 90% confident that you will complete your goal, whether this is your first book or your fourth or fifth book, because sometimes you run out of steam. Um, it's not necessarily just on your first book. Um, mm -hmm. So we're going to walk uh, you through all of this. I'm going to take you from 10 to 50 and Mairead will bring you home from 65 to 95%. Uh, Houston, ST Houston, Shannon. Yeah, she loves that there's real numbers from studies here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's awesome. Um, okay, so from the uh, 10 to 25%, I batched these two together. Um, because really this is if, if you're here watching this i'm assuming that you've you actually have the idea or goal of writing a book and you've consciously decided that you will do it so i'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one um just you being here in the morning because i know for most of you it's in the morning 10 a.m on the eastern um eastern seaboard um so we're not going to spend much time on this one and break to 40 percent if you decide when you will do it when you will do it. So here are some tools of what you can do is end goal tracking. You know, there's tons of software. If you type in, you know, tracking goals into Google, there'll be literally a thousand or more um, pieces of software that you can that you can use. So you take your word count uh, or you figure out how many hours you think it would take you to to write the book. And then you could put a certain date and then work back and, and break it up into manageable chunks. Um, yeah, that one's pretty simple. Another thing you can do is similar to what, um, what Craig did in his was either book an editor or put your book up on Amazon as a pre-order. Um, there are some stipulations to that though. So, um, <clears throat> once you can delay the release date of your pre-order, you can push it back 30 days with the, without penalty. Uh, but if you cancel your pre-order, pre you can't do another one for another year. Mm. Uh, so that's according to Amazon. But if you do t message them, if you do email them and ask them nicely and ask them, hey, you know, I messed up. Can I can I do another pre-order? They can't. They will do it. I think it depends on what person reads the email or like sort of what type of day they're having. Um, but this is this will get you to 40 percent uh, if you decide when you will do it. 50% if you plan on how you will do it. So the how you will do it is, you know, you could use like, okay, I am going to do it on this many days or I can do it Monday to Friday at this certain time. I'm going to commit half an hour to writing. Now, how you will do it is, okay, I'll use writing software. You can use like Google Docs is one of my favorite because it automatically backs things up in your cloud, which is super important. Um, <clears throat> Scrivener is, is something that a lot of people use. Atticus, there's so many different types of uh, writing software out there that you can use. Uh, and then to go along with how you're going to do it is identifying, you know, where you're going to do it. Uh, are you going to do it on your commute into work? Or are you going to do it after the kids are in bed? Um, or where in the house um, you're going to do it? Okay, I'm going to do it in my office. So that's where I feel the most inspired. Or I'm going to do it on my patio. Um, <clears throat> another how, and uh, we'll be dropping some some resources in here as well. But another how, which I which I really feel um, is is kind of fun, is gamification. Uh, adding gamification to writing your book is uh, forthewords.com. So for like the number four, thewords.com. And like I said there, this has added some form of gamification to um, to the writing process. Um, so it would work, you know, it worked for any genre, but like it would be really fun for fantasy writers um, where you earn like so many points and you earn, you unlock certain monsters. I never played like, what is that game? Where you go around and you collect monsters and you walk around, Pikachu? No, Pokemon. 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 <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Pokemon Go when you're outside doing it? Yeah, Pokemon Go, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sort of like adding the gamification to like Pikachu. Uh, I, I'm like the gamification to, you know, walking, right? Mm. Gamifying it, right? Like making it fun, being able to un unlock that next monster. Um, yeah. So this is another one, um, another one that you could uh, could uh, head over to uh, to help you with the how you're going to do it. Mm. So <clears throat> I've taken you from, you know, if you have an actual goal, if you consciously decide you'll do it, uh, if you decide when and how you'll do it, if you get to that point, um, you're already halfway there. Um, and that is, um, yeah, where I'm going to pass it over to Maraid to take you home from the 65 all the way up to the 95%. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what we do when we move from 50% to 65% is we begin to add a little bit of the accountability factor. So 65% is if you commit to someone that you will do it. This could be your friend or family, an author that you know in person or on social media. Um, and when you commit to them and make that step to, to say to someone, I am going to write my book, it's an active step towards achieving that goal. You're adding some structure, you're adding some accountability. Um, for example, and one of the ways of doing that online is on meetup.com. Um, there are groups on there that host writing sessions where you sign up to join other writers on Zoom and you just simply are with them for an hour writing your book. So this can be a great way to make progress because you're not just telling yourself that you're going to work on it, you're committing to do it with others. Where this lacks the 65% level um, is in personalization with regards to both accountability and feedback. So if you sign up to a group like this, for example, um, it's got 5,000 plus people in it. Um, and it's kind of easy to get lost in the fray and challenging to get feedback there. Um, and if you sign up and you don't show up, say you got busy, you forget, you just feel a bit nervous about it before the time comes, you're not very likely to get someone talking to you and saying, hey, you know, where were you this week? Or do you want to try again next week? There's not that dedicated person there to check in and encourage you. Um, yeah, that, sorry, sorry to cut you off there. But yeah, it's, yeah, it, yeah it's, it's really interesting. That I just went back one slide just to not disorientate too many people. Uh, but it's interesting, the, the social media. Um, so social media for me, coming from uh, the marketing coach perspective, you know, organic social media is, it, it can be, it can be a big time waster. Um, I'm talking about organic social media versus paid ads. So organic social media uh, can be challenging, can be a big time suck uh, in terms of finding new readers. But one thing it is great, great for is finding connections with, with other authors and then mm -hmm. leveraging those connections into accountability. But like you said, they're the con you know, stuff like that. It's, you know, the main, the main word in there is commit, right? And, you know, there's not a lot of um, sort of loose connections, loose commitments, I should say. Um, it seems to be more common. And, you know, it would happen for, it would be good for a couple of weeks and they would just sort of sizzle out. It wouldn't take you. Uh, it's very, very rare that it'll take you all the way to the finish line. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, it, it you know it might, but it's it just in my experience, um, it's less so than usual. Mm. So, and then looking from that potentially sizzling out um, generic accountability to the ninety five percent more likely to complete your book doing ninety five percent faster, the differences that we want to tackle are going from that generic accountability to personalized accountability. And from maybe limited minimal feedback to specialized feedback from a professional. Um, the other thing is about your time constraints, what we're talking about, that we're all busy. Um, and a group that meets with 5,000 plus people, but even trying to schedule with a group of five, it's not likely that it's going to perfectly fit into your schedule. Whereas what would be ideal would be something that is built for you um, around, your, around your life at that time. Um, so what this is, what we're looking at in 95% is about taking the best of all of the advice that we've spoken about so far, um, removing these limitations and finding a system that improves on them. And what that is, is for writers, is um, getting a writing coach. So the best way to achieve 95%, if we could go to the next slide, sure. um, thank you, 
is having a specific accountability appointment with someone that you've committed to. Um, so that's having regular appointments that fit into your schedule and work for you. It's for writers of all experience levels at any stage of your manuscript. So you might be a new writer who's just had the idea or just started planning your first book, or you might be someone like Craig who was had written his first book and was a couple in you know, two thirds of the way through his sequel, but was really struggling at that point. Um, so the benefits of this are enormous, and, and I work with clients as a coach. Um, and one of the first things that I do is we take their big goal, which for example, might be, I wanna have my first draft done by January. And we break that up into smaller, more achievable steps to get there. So we say, what does that mean in terms of words per week to get there? How many chapters is that that you need to be writing? Um, and then we create a realistic schedule around that and it helps with your confidence and your productivity. So when we know the schedule and the output that we're aiming for, um, extra accountability comes from the fact that you've got someone that you're meeting each week, every two weeks, that's expecting to see those results. It's a lot harder than it is to just not show up to an online group to meet someone and say, no, I haven't done my writing this week, um, when you know that you're meeting someone that's expecting it. Um, and the mm -hmm. third benefit, um, those benefits are on the next slide as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that determining the goals, the accountability, um, the third one is this real-time feedback. So there's nothing wrong with getting advice from your friends and family, beta readers, um, other writers online, um, and you should do that as well. But getting that extra input from an expert as you go is invaluable. Um, Denis, you actually have some experience with this personally, is that correct, with um, the sort of 65% version to the coaching personalised version? Yeah, well, <clears throat> it was... It was really the the limited non-expert feedback versus the specialized advice. Um, yeah, so with my business and even just building up this business, um, I was looking for some accountability. So I started with. Now it is I don't like I don't want to talk badly about the I won't even mention the name of it. Actually, it was a generic accountability business, um, and so it was just provided generic accountability. Um, now the, the danger with, and I like to equate it like this way. So like, imagine, uh, if I took you to a 20 acre field and I said, okay, listen, here's a backhoe. We're, we're getting so far away from books right now, but I, I like this story. <clears throat> like here's, here's a backhoe in this 20 acre field somewhere is buried a time capsule. Now here's the manual to the backhoe. And I'm going to check in with you every couple of hours just to make sure you're digging. Okay. And so if you need other resources, you find where those other resources are. But here's the manual and uh, good luck. Right. I'm assuming you will be like, you would be like, what the hell? Yeah, I don't know how to drive a back. Like, I, I, you'd probably be thinking, like, yeah, I, I, you didn't give me enough information. Like, it's not, you know, it's not good. Um, let's say someone else showed up. And said, "Oh yeah, you know, what? I've helped other people find um, find time capsules in their fields, and they showed you how. They took a couple of hours to show you how a backhoe works, and how to turn on the lights when it gets dark at night, and how to refuel it, and how to maintain it. And then you go to the field, and they show you, okay, this this embankment is too steep for the backhoe, and there's poison ivy over here, um, you know, so avoid that area." Um, and they show you how to like find the telltale signs of maybe where someone would have left a stake. Um, and they brought some ground penetrating radar, right? So that's that's the difference between just like general uh, feedback and accountability versus versus the the specialized uh, the specialized advice. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, that that's absolutely. that's my experience with it. So, yeah, in the generic accountability, I was like, yeah. Okay. Um, this, this is all good stuff, but you know, I was really, you know, there's one thing versus like doing something and there's another thing. Okay. Like having the confidence that you're doing something right. And you know, the, the usual saying is, you know, craziness. What is that from Albert Einstein? Craziness is insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. Right. Yeah. If you're writing the book and you have that like gut feeling, like, I feel like, it could be better. I feel like I'm making mistakes throughout this. It leaves that low confidence 
and you're not inspired to keep writing or to because writing a book is a hard endeavor right there are a lot of life challenges uh that can easily get in the way and if you're not feeling super super confident and and inspired to write uh those challenges can very very easily take over um mm. so yes it is a part of the accountability but also the accountability and building up that confidence by um you know making progress but also making good progress um you know using back you back to the story there um, you know, using the backhoe the right way, you know, that's not going to break, right? Knowing that, okay, I know I've identified three spots that possibly could be in as, as opposed to backhoeing the whole 20 acre field, right? You feel a lot more confident, a lot more inspired in, that you feel like you see the end. Yeah, absolutely. And that's because yeah. you, you know how to achieve that goal now with that person showing you, you've designed the plan to get there and you've got someone, like you say, every step of the way to help you. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the other results specific to writing um, here are the, that it helps you overcome the writing, sorry, um, yeah. that it helps okay. you overcome writer's block. So you can talk through those challenges as you meet them, as opposed to getting stuck on them by yourself. Um, often that's a lot of my job is just uh, talking through, say, a writer has a problem with, I need to get this character into this building and I don't know how to get them there. A lot of the time it's just talking it through and me asking questions and throwing out some options and together we brainstorm and, and solve the problem together. Um, mm -hmm. And in doing this, you also cut down on your editing time, your developmental line editing, and therefore how many rewrites might be necessary. So it's speeding mm -hmm. up your developmental editing because we, if, say for example, you hit those plot holes, um, if you're working with someone, they're gonna notice those potentially before you do where this doesn't quite make sense and you hit it as you write as opposed to seeing it later um and in the line editing it speeds that up because if you've got someone looking at your work that can point out um little habits like i, I find often writers um go from good to great because they get rid of mistakes that are um habitual and quite simple very correctable but that are hard to see by yourself um Often there'll be things like just using someone's name too much instead of their pronouns or um, relying on crutch phrases and repeating those over and over. And as soon as someone points that out to you, then you fix it, then you know how. Um, and you also become a better writer in the long term, even when you're not then working with a coach. Um, so all of this means that getting a coach and doing this 95% specific accountability appointment with someone that you've committed to makes you more likely to achieve that goal faster and more confidently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, those um, are the, um, we'll just go, just conclude uh, by looking at the steps of what we covered here. Uh, and then we'll get to uh, the questions. Uh, I'll read them out loud for us, Marie, and then uh, I'll more than likely pass them off to you. Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, what we talked about is the probability of, of uh, completing your goal and how to get there much, much faster. You know, we didn't talk about the surface stuff in terms of, um, oh, you can write faster if you get this fancy new keyboard. Or if I, I saw one of the comments, if you have weights dangling over your head, like nothing dangerous. You know, we're not going to promote anything dangerous like that. Um, but, you know, the deeper stuff, right? The confidence, um, the accountability. Uh, from the real study from uh, ASTD. Um, so this is what uh, we covered today. Um, so yeah, we'll take uh, some questions here. And I saw some questions uh, come in here. And let me just read off the first one that I see here. Um, okay, Diana writes, um, what do you do for a live person to be accountable if no one in your area writes? There are n no meet in person writing groups in my town or the surrounding areas. Yeah. So, what would you what would you say to that? What What do you do for a, a live person to be accountable if no one in your area writes? So, Diana, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming, like, you mean like live person, as in. Okay, so she does FaceTime uh, with her sister in California to bounce ideas of when, when she's stuck. Yeah. So what would you do uh, if there's no one in your, your area 
uh, that writes no in person. Right. So if you if you want that that pathwise feedback in a writing coach, um, typically those are on Zoom. I meet ninety percent of my clients on Zoom, um, and although that does take away from some of the, um, you know, it is a bit different from meeting people in person. Um, I think all of the benefits are still there. It's still a live person. You're still getting that real time feedback, um, and I think. Yeah, and also those social media groups are still available to you, regardless of where you live. Um, I also think if you look at your local library, um, that you know there may be nothing around you, but often if you dig deep enough, there are going to be people in your area that are interested in writing. Um, you could begin at book clubs, um, and just just seek them out. Yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, I don't think I have anything to add to that one. Um, you know, the whole pandemic thing brought, you know, the world closer through Zoom chats and FaceTime, like Diana said, with her with her sister in, in California. And it is great to have someone to bounce ideas off of that you trust. Um, that is fantastic. That's, you know, half of how I wrote my first book was I would just I would just go to work at the time and be like, hey, guys, like I'm stuck with this part of the plot. Um, and then you start to develop you know, more and more people that are like, oh yeah, you're extremely creative. And then, you know, you would text them at two o'clock in the morning being like, what do I do now? But, you know, you eventually you're like, okay, or, you know, you don't want to bug them too much uh, type of thing. That's, that's kind of what I found it uh, getting into, but um, okay. Next question here. Um, and I got to put it at the bottom here again. Uh, <clears throat> tips for finding that accountability buddy someone who wants to be as dedicated as you are so i can answer part of this question so um yeah so it going back to that keyword right commit right um the strongest form of commitment is usually a financial commitment right if you committed financially uh so it's the same thing with books right and me as a marketing coach uh, through my books and other people's books, you know, free book giveaways are good, um, but people really value what what they pay for, it, right? So a free book giveaway, you might give 2,000 books away, but in terms of the read through, how many people are going to read book one and go on to book two or sign up to your email list? It's a very small percentage, right? Versus if your book is at 399 or 499 right? You see much greater, greater read through rate. You're going to get a lot less sellers or a lot less buyers, as you say, but you know, those buyers are going to be more committed because people value what they pay for, right? And they're committed to what they're paid for. So the same thing with like, I use with a lot of my clients is, you know, if I was to give you two watches, right? Uh, I'd be like, okay, here's a free one. And then buy this one off of me for $500, right? Like which one are you going to go into, you know, value more, right? They might be the exact same watch, Right. But the one for $500, you're going to, you know, make sure you don't scratch it up and make sure all of these things. Right. Um, so that really goes deep uh, with commitment. It doesn't always have to be financial, but that is one of the greatest forms of commitment. Um, another one is. Um, yeah. Do you, you can. Yeah. Do you have any ideas uh, in terms of how to find a really committed accountability buddy? Yeah, so I, th I think the trouble there, and, and one of the things that I pick out from this question is someone as dedicated as you are, um, yeah. because that can often be the trouble when you um, sort of agree to do something with a friend. It's whether you are working at different levels or you begin at one level and then they drop off or the other way around. Um, that's a big challenge. And I think writing coaches are, you know, not to keep coming back to that, but it's having that specific dedicated person that not just is as dedicated as you are, but could sometimes be more dedicated than you are and push you when you're slipping a little bit. Um, so I think writing coaching is the best way of doing that. And otherwise it's just about, if it is with a friend, I think it's just about being honest up front about your expectations and your goals and what you're looking from that relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like setting expectations. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I think that's you know what leads to the biggest uh, maybe drop offs or miscommunications is lack of expectations. Um, mm. So me, when you identify a possible, I want to say a possible target, but like a possible accountability buddy, <laughs> some target sounds weird. Uh, if you identify a possible accountability buddy, 
uh, sit down and talk about expectations. Like get it right out there. Uh, mm. What happens if one of us starts to slip? Right. What What's going to happen? Yeah. Um, so that would be, uh, yeah, our advice. Uh, the next question is, uh, thank you for that question, uh, Angela. Uh, next question comes from Janet. Uh, where do you recommend we find a writing coach? Well, you can find them um, really like anywhere. You can go to like Upwork uh, or even Fiverr. Fiverr gets a little bit of a bad name. But you can find some good people on Upwork or just by Googling it. Um, and then, of course, Maraid is our um, on-staff writing coach. And I think she has a couple of spots left. Um, so if you are interested in learning more, um, yeah, so the URL is in the description of this video. So it's weekendpublisher.com forward slash writing dash coach. And again, that's weekendpublisher.com forward slash writing dash coach. Um, but yeah, tell them what you you uh, or fill them in what you offer for free at the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we offer a free discovery call, which is um, half an hour, but I don't cut you off at that point. And often we run a little bit longer um, to just talk about what it is that you're looking for to see if we have a good fit, you know, to just find out about the experience and what it might be that you're looking for. And we do that. Um, to help you get comfortable and get to know me, but also to um, kind of work out what it is that I can help you with specifically, um, because it's not one size fits all. And that's what we keep getting at with this 95% that personalized feedback and accountability is key. Um, so yeah, so it's a half hour discovery call free chat that you can book with me at any time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, again, the, the link is in the description of the video. Uh, next question is, this is working pretty well, having it on the banner at the bottom. It's good, yeah. yeah. Um, how do you identify the right accountability partner? One for writing, but writing in the same niche genre, not the generic accountability partner. Mm. Yeah, so uh, I forget who wrote this. I think it was Easy Graphics. I apologize if it wasn't hit. Uh, easy graphics, yeah. Uh, the running in the same uh, niche or genre. Uh, I I hinted at it before, but social media is actually a great place uh, to to find other authors. Uh, it's not necessarily a great place to find readers, not organically anyway, um, but it is uh, great because a lot of authors are hanging out there. Mm. Um, but of course, you know, you want to be ultimately you want to be with the readers. Um, you know, hanging out with the readers, finding out what books they like, what books they don't like, what tropes they like, what tropes they don't like. I always refer it to refer to it as um, I was a realtor like 10, 12 years ago, and I was I was horrible, horrible at it. And one of my main issues was that I'd always spend time time at the office with other realtors, and like I'm not, they're not going to use me to buy or sell their homes. Like I needed to get out there in the community. Um, so it's the same thing with like social media and social and writers groups. It is great, great, great to make connections and to identify accountability partners uh, and to share sort of war stories, but just don't get dragged down too much in like, uh, this is so tough. This is so tough. Like try to find someone who's like trying to find solutions to, to, to the challenges of being an author. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's what to, to look for in, um, and you, you know, you'll just naturally uh, just come across people in Facebook groups or on posts to see who is who is active and who's posting something that you feel like you would connect with. Mm. Um, and then hopefully they're they're in the same niche or genre or just hanging out on um, you know certain Instagram pages or face or Facebook groups uh, specific niche ones and looking mm. in there. Yeah, and I would I would question if they necessarily need to be in the same niche or genre. Um, like that would be the ideal and that would be really nice, but I don't know that that's necessarily the, you know, the number one attribute that you want them to have. I think it's, um, it might be more about just how you get along as people, whether they're writing at the same rate as you, whether their goals are similar, their experience level is similar. I think those things might be more important than if you're writing sci-fi and they're writing young adult, for example. Yeah. Um, Angela, 
Sorry, I wanted to acknowledge. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, they don't they don't necessarily have to be. I mean, it is kind of nice, especially um, to to bounce ideas off of. Mm. Um, um, because they are they're aware of sort of the tropes and what what readers in their in their field expect. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so this one is another one from Angela. Um, I guess it's because people I try to be accountable with, they always have excuses as to why they've not done something. Yeah. I want someone who wants to write past that. Yeah, mm. absolutely. And it's, I think it just really goes back, it goes back to that word commit. Right. Um, it is, it is challenging, challenging. It can be challenging to find someone, um, um, who is unpaid, uh, to, to commit. Right. Um, yeah but there are there are people out there there are people out there if you keep looking mm -hmm. yeah uh yeah easy graphic said bet that bet many people will start looking for that next accountability target i mean partner <laughs> yeah 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 oh yeah i love it the next target <laughs> um <clears throat> yeah JD wrote easy graphics, so true. Scan, scan, scan. Target acquired. I love it. Um, oh, D Brown. Um, That's a good question too. Uh, let me add it to here. Um, is it hard to find beta readers? Uh, no. That's all. No. <laughs> um. <clears throat> Yeah, so it's what I've used uh, for beta readers in the past, and uh, I want to hear from from Maraid as well. Uh, but what I've used from from beta readers um, is is Fiverr uh, and and paying them, um, and depending on the length of your book, um, what I like using them for is I like if if there's a certain like we're, I'm working with an author right now to market their book, and there's a certain demographic that we're trying to target. And we're not trying to target another demographic. So we're trying to target more males and not females. So I get identified different beta readers in different demographics, and I want to see how they react to the book. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one uh, one thing about beta readers. Another thing is it's, it's a great like final proofread. Um, but yeah, it goes back to that whole commitment thing, right? Is okay. I am paying someone, and they have a deadline to get that book back to me as a beta reader. Um, and it's dependent on your book. I, I think it's used, um, it's like $80 I uh, paid. They're in different price ranges, um, but they do come back with like some great, great feedback. Uh, I got one, he came back with like two pages worth of feedback, like pretty helpful feedback too. And like another page, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say it was that bad, like a, like a quarter of a page of like minor typos. Right, like it's very, very useful, um, and it has that deadline. As opposed to, I try to use beta readers like friends and stuff, and you know, with friends and family, you know, it's good. But like sometimes you just really have to hound them, right? And it can work, um, but it's more frustrating. Mm. Yeah, yeah. What about you? Uh, how do you? Uh, what's your best way? Yeah, absolutely. Very similar. Um, we've used Fiverr and Upwork together to find beta readers. And I would definitely echo that family and friends can be helpful, um, but often they're not going to be as harsh as maybe you're looking for, which isn't always a bad thing because some writers, I think, are prone to beating themselves up too much um, and mm -hmm. getting some encouragement and boosting is really genuinely helpful and true. Um, but if you want, like, from that specific target group, um, beta readers are a fantastic way to go. Um, Denny and I worked on a book together a couple of months ago, and uh, we couldn't work out if uh, we were sort of looking at it and trying to step away from our own life experiences um, and more towards you know, the mindset of who the target audience was, which wasn't really either of us. Um, and we got some great feedback on it from that perspective. And I think that was through Fiverr. Yeah, yeah, that that uh, that was through Fiverr. Um, yeah, so Martin wrote the best thing I did was send the book to twice as many betas as I needed, knowing they wouldn't all come through. Yeah, so it, it's the same thing with um, 
um, like reviews too, like acquaintances and stuff. Uh, people who say, yes, I'll do it, usually bank on about 30% of people actually mm -hmm. doing it. Um, so yeah, that's that's the number I generally use, is about 30% uh, commitment rate for, for the unpaid. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, JD wrote, for beta readers, I've put it out on social media. I've been surprised at how many people respond, yeah. Have to be careful who you trust with your manuscript, though. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And always put yeah. your name on it and, you know, know who you're sending it out to and do be careful with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Six Cats Press. Five I found challenging now that my wife works there as a provider. They skim money from you and they pay someone. Yeah, yeah. They take, they take as a provider, it, it can be more difficult. They take like 20% or something. I think it is. Uh, they take quite a bit. Um, yeah, these are all good questions, though. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I think moving from the, uh, like we say, moving from 65 to 95% in terms of thinking about a beta reader is um, potentially thinking about hiring editors to do like a little last read through. Um, I call it a wash and rinse sometimes. Um, someone that knows your genre, that's really important and can give you a more professional beta read, but not necessarily edit the book, but give you that feedback. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, the the in terms of the beta readers, um, Easy Graphics wrote Fiverr beta, Fiverr beta readers. Let me just throw this on here. Fiverr beta readers, trustworthy enough to trust with your manuscript. I mean, I have several times. Um, the whole manuscript thing is is tough because any book with any sort of success, uh, you'll be able to find on like on torrent sites, right? Like you, you're, it's just sort of inevitable. Um, but that's not that's not really the main concern as, as self published authors. The main concern is lack of exposure. Right? That's that's the main concern. I don't want to get too much into the marketing, um, but. Yeah, there, there has been sort of some horror stories about people repackaging it and then posting it as a book of their own. Um, but these are sort of the, the the risks that you run when you post something for public consumption, right? There's no getting around it. There's just no getting around it. Uh, one person did ask about watermarking it as well. Uh, yeah, you can watermark it, uh, absolutely. I think it's... Um, now, don't quote me on this. I think it's bookfunnel.com that um, when you send it out to ARC readers, they add a specific watermark to it that the people can't see. Uh, but if it was to be leaked, you're able to maybe somewhere in the metadata or something. I forget exactly how it works. I've never used it myself, that, that specific feature, um, that they'll be able to, see, to track it back to who leaked it. Uh, so that might be something to look at too, and I'm 95% sure it's um, it's book funnel. Mm -hmm. uh, but in either case, what you want to be looking at is reviews, because like Denise says, it's probably the, the more important and common issue is, are you going to get quality feedback from someone that knows the genre? And so for either of those questions about trust with them, reviews and experience is the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah, and I've used, like the people I've used on on Fiverr, um, there's one guy I used, I forget his name now, um, and um, yeah, he was fantastic. He had like a PhD or something in, in writing, and I don't know what he's doing on Fiverr, um, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, here's another question. This will be for you, Maureen. Uh, I think you'll be better in a position to answer this. Have either of you participated or recommending people to participate in NaNoWriMo? or Camp Nano. So for those of you who are not aware, it is National November Writing Month. Is that what it stands for? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. I'm not sure um, of remote, but that's Nano, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I haven't participated in them personally. Um, and I think those types of challenges have pros and cons. I think um, it depends who you are and what your personal problem with writing is. Like if you're someone that finds it hard to, to sit down every day and do some work, then those things can be super helpful. Um, 
and I think they they would sort of hit at that 65% where you're committing to someone, you're thinking about how and you're thinking about when. Um, if you're someone for whom sitting down and doing the work isn't the problem, it's maybe when you sit down, you get stuck in research or you edit over and over, um, or you know, you keep rewriting the same parts, I think this is going to be less helpful for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and some people said National Novel Writing Month. I said National November Writing Month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, most people just know it as like Nano Um yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for the tips. Uh, what you said earlier on being where the readers are is great advice. It's also where the best beta readers are will be. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So we'll just uh, wrap up there. Uh, for your next video, uh, in the description, uh, again, is where uh, you can learn more about our writing coaching. Um, and if you'd like to learn more, there is a free 30-minute uh, discovery call with Maraid. Uh, no pressure. She was learn more about you and determine if she's able to provide uh, the most amount of value to you possible. Um, in terms of where to go next, in the description as well, below that link, our other uh, playlists uh, for other videos in the um, in this conference. Um, so yeah, thank you very much uh, for everyone um, attending. Uh, I hope you feel at least you have the tools um, or the resources to get to that 95% confident uh, that you will finish your book. And um, We'll see you uh, guys around. Oh, subscribe to the channel as well, because we'll be talking more about marketing and writing your own book in general. So anything to say, Marin? Yeah, just thank you guys. And thank you to all for having us. And it was, it was great to have a chat with you. Perfect. All right. Bye. Bye.